I'm Pastor George Borkart, and this is another Higher Things Video Short. Jesus heals the centurion's servant. That's the subject of today's Higher Things Video Short. Hey, if you love our videos, if you are learning about your Christian faith in places you never expected to learn about the, your faith from, a Missouri Synod Lutheran pastor and his Jack Russell Terrier named Thor, go ahead and like and subscribe today. You can also go to support.higherthings.org and give today. Your tax-deductible gift keeps Higher Things, a youth organization all about passing the faith to the next generation. Keeps us the rolling. When he had entered Capernaum, a centurion came forward to him, appealing to him, Lord, my servant is paralyzed at home, suffering terribly. He says, and the Lord said, uh, I will come and heal him. But the centurion replied, Lord, I am not worthy that you would come under my roof. I'm not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and your, my, your, my servant will be healed. For I, too, am a man under authority with soldiers under me. I say to one, go, and he goes, and another, come, and he comes. Uh, and to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus said, heard this, he marveled. He marveled. Athamudza. He marveled at the faith of the centurion. He marveled about it. And said, I've not found such faith in all of Israel. I tell you, many will come from east and west and recline at table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven, while the sons of the kingdom will be thrown into outer darkness. In that place will there be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And he said to the centurion, Go, let, your, let it be done to you as you believe. And his servant was healed that very moment. So many gifts in this text. So many. The first gift is that the centurion is by nature a Gentile. And Jesus listens to him. He's the oppressor. That's the conqueror. That's the enemy. And he listens to him and he has mercy. And he listens to the man and he marvels at the man's faith. Second, the way the centurion talks to him should catch our attention. He orders Jesus around because that's what he knows. I issue orders. Things happen. I say go and they go. I say come and they come. I'm, I got people over me. They give me orders. So say the word, Lord, and your, my, your servant, my, my servant will be healed. So he says, just issue the order, which is itself an imperative. Jesus is ordered by this man to heal his servant, and he does it. Third, he calls that faith. We, we make these prayers where we sort of um, do this manipulative thing with God. We'll get to this tomorrow. But we, we, we sort of do this thing where we we sort of butter him up with sort of pious words and stuff. And um, this guy just orders Jesus around. And he does it. So that's faith. Not the order part. But the knowing that God is such a God as to do what he says. That his words mean life. Go, go. Come, come. Do this, done. I forgive you all your sins. Your sins forgiven. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this is my blood. For the remission of sins. Forgiven. Baptism now saves you. So baptism now saves you. By grace you've been saved through faith, and this is not of yourselves, it's a gift from God, not by works, so that no one can boast. And we are saved by grace alone, apart from the works of the law. Faith is not that the guy orders Jesus. We should take note of that, but that's not the miracle. The miracle is that the faith is that the centurion knows that Jesus' words carry 
and perform and do and deliver and gift what they say. The fact that God's word does what it says isn't a gift yet until it does what it says for you and for your salvation. As I stated earlier, I forgive you all your sins means I forgive you all your sins. Get in bed, buddy. Get in bed. And so we should take note of this, this Gentile, which God s- saves. And again, he's a Gentile. God saves bad people. All of this is about the suffering and death of Jesus. All of it. It's about his being such a God as to save even this Gentile centurion servant. And to do so because he's such a God as to be good. He's a good God. See it on Calvary and Easter. You can see it in the healing of the centurion. Many, many will come from east and west and recline with table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Many Jews, many Gentiles will come Many sinners will come and commune with the great fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But the sons of the kingdom, the ones who rejected Jesus, will be outside in the darkness. You are in, not because you're so good, but because he is so good. You are in, not because you've changed or altered your behavior, but because God took on your flesh to die and then enlivens you to change and alter your behavior. You are saved solely by the merits of Christ and his cross. That's the miracle of this day when God orders, God is ordered around by sinners. It's a miracle. And that's faith. Jesus, you are such a God as to save. That's who you are. That's what you are. So take comfort today, no matter what sin you have, it is forgiven in the suffering and death of Jesus. You're free from it. You don't have to do it anymore. Go, sin no more. Be free. I'm Pastor George Barkart, and this has been another Higher Things Video Short. <laughs>